You open DaVinci Resolve, switch to Fusion, and then freeze. All those nodes staring back at you like a puzzle. Sounds familiar. Don't worry, because in this tutorial we're going to create a very cool looking text animation, and by the end you'll not only have a smooth final result, but also a clear understanding of how to merge different nodes and place them correctly as foreground and background to get the perfect output. Open DaVinci Resolve and in the media pool, right click and choose New Fusion Composition. Set the duration to 5 seconds, I'm keeping it at 60 frames, and click Create, then drag it onto the timeline. If the media pool is not visible, click its toggle button to show or hide it anytime. If you see an error message here, don't worry, it is harmless. Now right click on your first text animation and select Open in Fusion. This opens the Fusion page, where you will see the node editor in the center. We will be working with these nodes to design and animate our project step by step. The first option we have here is the background. Simply click and drag it into your node section so you can place it anywhere you like. We are using this background node to add some color to our shape. When you hover over this node, you will notice two small dots. The first dot will show your selected node in the first viewer window. The second dot will display it in the second viewer window. This will be very useful later in the tutorial. You can also switch between these screens quickly by pressing the number 1 or 2 on your keyboard. One important thing to remember is that your media out node should always be shown in the second viewer. Now let's change the color of our background. I am picking this color for the example, but you can choose any color you like. You can also use a gradient for more creative results. Perfect. Now the background will cover your entire frame, so we need to crop it. To do this, use the rectangle mask. Simply click on it and it will be applied to your background node. This click action only works when you have the desired node selected in the node area. Next, we need to display this layer in the main preview. To do that, connect the background node to the media out node. Remember the square icon represents the output and the triangle icon represents the input. So here we are connecting the output of the background to the input of media out one. Once connected, you will see the layer displayed in the output viewer. This step ensures that whatever we create in Fusion is sent to the main timeline for playback and final output. Great! Now select the rectangle and adjust its width and height as needed. You can also modify the radius to round the corners. Let's keep this current size for now. At this point, there is no animation applied to it, so let's add one. Move the playhead to around frame 50 and set a keyframe for the width. Then move to the one second mark and change the width value to zero. Just like in After Effects, Fusion will automatically create the animation between these keyframes once you activate it. Now play it back and check how it looks. If you want to adjust the easing of these keyframes, open the Spline tab. At first, you might not see any curve or graph, so you need to select the property you want to edit, which in this case is Width. If it is still not visible, click on the Zoom to Fit icon. This will display the animation curve clearly in the graph editor, allowing you to refine the speed and smoothness of the motion. Now, select all the keyframes by pressing Ctrl plus A, then press F to add some ease, and adjust the curve handles in the graph to refine the motion for a smoother look. If you are happy with this look, let's move to the next step. Next, add text by first deselecting all nodes, then dragging a text node into the node area. Connect the output of the text node to the output of the background node, which will automatically create a merge node to combine them. I know this may sound confusing, but hold on a second. I will make it easy for you to understand. In this setup, the background shape contains the rectangle. Let's keep them here so that it will be easier for us to understand. The text node holds our text and the merge node blends both together before sending the result to the media out node for display in the viewer. This completes the first step of our design process. Select the text node and change the text to something else. Then set the font to Poppins and choose the font weight that fits your design. Once it looks right, move the media out node slightly to make room for adding more nodes later in the project. I want the same mask that we applied to the shape to also work on the text and while I could create it from scratch, a quicker way is to simply copy the rectangle mask from the background node, select the text node, and paste it there. This instantly applies the mask to the text layer, and when you check the viewer, you can clearly see the masked effect in action. Now, I want to offset the text animation so it appears right after the shape animation finishes. To do this, select the rectangle mask connected to the text node, open the keyframes panel. Since we are not editing curves, 
we can hide the spline panel for now. In the keyframes panel, locate the layer named Rectangle 11, which represents the mask. This is also a perfect time to rename nodes for better organization by selecting any node and pressing F2 on your keyboard, making them easier to find later. Now select the text mask, open it, and locate the width property. Click on it to reveal its keyframes, then select these width keyframes and drag them slightly to the right to offset the animation by a few frames. In DaVinci Resolve, these small vertical lines represent keyframes, so it's easy to identify and adjust them. You can also make the animation slower or faster by dragging these keyframes closer together or farther apart. Check the animation now, and this is the result we have so far. If you are going for a simple animation, you could stop here, but if you want to make it more advanced, let's keep going. Select both the background mask and the background node, then copy and paste them into the node area. We will now use these duplicated nodes to create a white outline for the shape. This layered effect will give the animation a more dynamic and polished look. Let's see how to set this up. We need to add more merge nodes to combine everything correctly. Drag a new merge node into the node area and place it in position, then drag another one and place it where needed. Take the output of the merge 3 node and connect it to merge 1. Next, connect the output of the background node to Merge 3 and do the same with this background and connect it to the Merge 2. Now grab the output of the Merge 2 and connect it with the Merge 3. At this stage, keep the placement of your nodes, just like I'm doing here. This way, you can easily understand the connection between these nodes. Select the duplicated background and change its color to white, as this will be our white outline. Although the connections are made, the current order is not showing correctly in the output viewer. To fix this, simply disconnect Merge 2, then press and hold the Alt key on your keyboard and drop it onto Merge 3. This time you'll be asked to set the placement of the node, either in the foreground, background or as an effect mask. As a beginner, I recommend choosing this option first because it makes it much easier to understand where the node is actually connecting. This simple step will also help clear up a lot of confusion. Disconnect Background 1 and do the same process with it, connecting it as the foreground. Now reconnect Merge 2, and this time the issue will be fixed. In Fusion, the green arrow represents the foreground and the yellow arrow represents the background, so with the correct connections we now have the proper order. The next step is to offset the white background's animation. Instead of adjusting Background 2 directly, select the main background mask, open it, and offset its keyframes slightly so the white shape appears just before the main shape. This creates a layered, dynamic effect. Next, enable Motion Blur for each of the masks. Open the settings for each mask, turn on Motion Blur, and increase the quality to 10 for a smoother, more polished look. Finally, grab the yellow playback range bar and move it so it starts around frame 50. This ensures the animation plays only between these points, making it easier to preview the effect in real time. With that, the animation is complete. Thank you for following this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, good luck and peace.